Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord bless you as you walk with Him today. We often run into people that say, Hey, this is God's will and I'm doing this for God. But sometimes we need to be watchful and be careful and how we listen to them and how we respond to them. And today we read in the story uh, two men who killed his own boss king and comes and runs to David and said, hey, we're doing this for you and for the Lord. And David responds, nope, that's not what God is doing and that's not what I want. And today we want to think about this passage, meditate on it together. Second Samuel chapter 4 verses 1 through 12 When Ishbosheth son of Saul heard that Abner had died in Hebron he lost courage and all Israel became alarmed Now Saul's son had two men who were leaders of raiding bands one was named Baana and the other Rechab They were sons of Rimmon the Berethite from the tribe of Benjamin Beeroth is considered part of Benjamin because the people of Beeroth fled to Gitaim and have lived there as aliens to this day. Jonathan son of Saul had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became crippled. His name was Mephibosheth. Now Rechab and Baana, the sons of Rimmon the Berethite, set out for the house of Ishbosheth. And they arrived there in the heat of the day while he was taking his noonday rest. They went into the inner part of the house as if to get some wheat, and they stabbed him in the stomach. Then Rechab and his brother Baana slipped away. They had gone into the house while he was lying on the bed in his bedroom. After they stabbed and killed him, they cut off his head. Taking it with them, they traveled all night by way of the Arabah. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron and said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, son of Saul, your enemy, who tried to take your life. This day the Lord has avenged my lord, the king, against Saul and his offspring. David answered Rechab and his brother Baana, the sons of Rimmon the Berethite, As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of all trouble, when a man told me Saul is dead and thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and put him to death in Ziklag. That was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed an innocent man in his own house and on his own bed, should I not now demand his blood from your hand and rid the earth of you? So David gave an order to his men, and they killed them. They cut off their hands and feet and hung the bodies by the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in Abner's tomb at Hebron. Ishbosheth was Saul's son and who became a puppet king and that Abner uh, established as a king over Israel. And we do not see a lot about him other than the fact that he probably did not go out in the battle against Philistine and where Jonathan and Saul died. Perhaps he was a, a coward person, I don't know for sure. But there isn't a lot about him and then what we saw about him 
was that the words that he speaks is that he accuses uh, his supporter, Abner, why did you sleep with my father's concubine? And then when Abner gets upset, he couldn't say anything. He was a very weak king. And the only thing that he did uh, as a king that's recorded here is that he listened to David and David's request and ends up sending his sister and half-sister to David, almost turning over a lot of important things uh, of uh, his country over to David. And then here we see uh, another thing here is that when he hears Abner is killed, that he loses his heart. His heart, his heart sank and he lost courage and then he was depressed in a way. Uh, this is what we see. And then also the setting here is that he was taking a nap, afternoon, a noon nap, siesta, uh, in his own uh, room, in his own bed, and then that's where he was killed by a two opportunist. Uh, Ishbosheth, you know, some people say, hey, where was the guard? And what was he doing? Was he not about uh, doing the kingly business? Uh, I don't know uh, what was really going on. But we see that his life uh, was short-lived and as a king that he didn't do too much. He was not a very significant person. But even about Ishbosheth and his life and his death and David you know, shows respect. And that's what we see. We see two of Ishbosheth's men come and seeing the opportunities, oppor opportunity uh, to uh, do something so that, that they may be able to gain a position in David's kingdom and comes and then kills uh, their boss. And then these two brothers come and kill him in verse 5. Now Rechab and Dan are the sons of Riman and set out for the house of Ishbosheth and they arrive there and then they kill him in uh, stabbing him in the stomach. And this is repeated again in verse 7. And that's what we see. And these men perhaps fleeing, and then they go all night running to David, and this is what they say. And then here is the head of uh, Ishbosheth, son of uh, Saul, your enemy who tried to take your life. This day the Lord has avenged my Lord, the king, against Saul and his offering, offspring. And that's what these two men say. They said, hey, we have here for you, the head of Ishbosheth, and then we know that he is your enemy because Saul was your enemy, and then the Lord has now finally avenged uh, uh, my Lord, and then we are the one that God is using to make this happen. And to uh, what they're saying, David responds and says, as surely as the Lord lives, who deliver a news of our Saul's death, and he thought it was a good news, but I killed him. And now you, how much more the wicked man, killing an innocent man in his own house, and then he kills him, and then makes them, you know, they hang them up with a hand and feet uh, cut off, and then near the pool of Hebron, where so many people come to see, and then gives a proper barrier to Ishbosheth. And we see here, some people think doing what people really want is, you know, what God wants, and then using God's name, you know, for their own purpose and for their own gain. But here, David says, and that's not how he deals and responds. And then we see that David has respect even for Ishbosheth, who stood against David. And then he gives him proper respect and barrier, and then buries him in the tomb where he buried Abner. From this story we see that David is a man that's not easily persuaded or swayed by people looking for opportunity because we see David had the wisdom that God has given.
because he wants to do right thing the right way in God's time. We see David cheating Ishbosheth, somebody that stood against him, opposed him for many years, but still with respect. Ishbosheth, though he was not a, a powerful enemy or somebody that was threatening to him, but nevertheless, we see he treated him with respect and fairly. And I think it's important to see that God is raising up David to really be the servant to the Lord and King who will be the King over all nations, who cares for people and then who respects even the person who is little and even the person that opposes him. Lord, help us to be people that treat others with kindness and respect as you treat us with grace. In Jesus' name, Amen.